Red Corner, originally from Auburn, Washington, now residing in Henderson, Nevada. He is wearing black trunks, trimmed in white, weighs in at 141 and three quarter pounds. The former, two time former lightweight champion of the world, a professional record of 25 wins, only two losses, one draw, 13 big knockouts. Here he is, Greg Haugen. His opponent in the blue corner hails from Cranston, Rhode Island. He is wearing leopard print trunks with white trim. He weighs in at 142 pounds even. He is also the former lightweight champion of the world. His record as a professional, 28 wins, just four losses, 23 big knockouts. Here is the Tasmanian devil, Vinny. Pazienza! Pazienza! Ten rounds. The capable Tony Orlando, the referee. Okay, gentlemen, I expect a clean fight. I expect you to listen to my commands, and I expect you to act like professionals. Touch gloves, go back to your corner. Let's go. Well, if you remember their first fight back in 1987, that's a familiar scene going nose to nose. Of course, Vinny Pazienza had a broken nose in that fight back in 1987, but he was able to overcome it. It was nonstop aggression. He rallied in front of the home fans, and he won that 15-round title fight. Then in 88, Haugen was on top of his game. He won a comfortable decision a few blocks away at the Atlantic City Convention Center to win back the belt. Now, no title on the line, but defining each other's careers, very important, and the remainder of their careers and how they go forward, that's what's on the line here in this scheduled 10-rounder. I think Vinny is... Um to me, he's settled down quite a bit since their first fight. He looks like a different fighter here, like a more mature, maybe not fighting off of so much emotion, a little bit smarter, which, um, you know, could work well against, uh, against this guy at the stage of his career. Those four years have served him well in terms of maturing in the ring. What may have actually harmed him, though, and I want to get into this, is the most recent of his four losses, John Scully. That was this past February in Atlantic City against Hector Macho Camacho, and that was a fight that really exposed a lot about Vinny Pazienza trying to find his identity, being somewhere in the middle of his old style and what is ostensibly a new style put in by Kevin Rooney. Right. Well, it's 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 funny. He's an unusual guy because he sometimes you see him he's very aggressive he's he's really hyper he's 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 almost wild at times then other times he boxes very smartly and, and uh you know clever boxing as an amateur he was actually known as a good boxer so um you know it's not exactly a new thing to him but um you know it depends on who he's in there with and uh for this guy i mean He's fought twice with him, hard, tough fights. He won one and he lost one. So maybe, maybe he needs to try a different plan here. Haugen has a good, smart jab. Ah, get off the head. Right lead there. And you see Paz brushing away the top of his brow. Both men utilizing the jab. Paz, he ends up boxing from the outside at a controlled, measured distance. Right hand scores for Pazienza. Active final moments of the first round between Vinny Pazienza and Greg Haugen scheduled for 10. Sight of Haugen Pazienza 3. Who can finish off this trilogy in the rubber match here? 
round number two they're scheduled for 10 and we've been hearing reports ringside that there was actually a run in in the locker room area before this fight between Pazienza and Haugen John Skelly there has always been bad blood for the past four years between these two what's your basic philosophy when it comes to these heated trilogies the third fight well generally when there's there's a third fight that means they're one and one the people are, are it's the tiebreaker so the third fight a lot of times emotionally and everything it's the biggest because it's almost like the end of the line like for the rest of our lives I'm going to either get over on you or you're going to get over on me. So, so there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of, um, you know, I can't say, not say, I don't know if desperation is the word, but, you know, the there's clock is There's an urgency. Is yeah, urgency. You've got to get it accomplished exactly. here, right? Exactly. This is the word. Like, like I'm all, one of us is going to get our last. You know, for, the, for all time, I'll be able to take it to the grave that I got you last or you got me. Pazienza still circling up on his toes on the outside. Now he's got his hands down around his waist and saying, what, you can't find me? This is the speed and movement that trainer Kevin Rooney was so high on. He felt confident enough to go as far as to say that he felt Haugen would have a tough time even finding Vinny Pazienza, and that's a big difference compared to the first two fights. Good jab from Pazienza. See, Vinny's a moving target, and going on what Kevin Rooney said, I mean, that, that's true for, for anybody. Like, if you have a guy that can move and box, He's difficult for anybody in the world. Like, like to fight a guy that can move and box and slip punches, not everybody can do that. And um, when you can make a guy miss, that's a huge advantage. Pazienza did what he always tends to do. Haugen scored with a left hand. Pazienza flurries back, always wants to win over the judges. You hear Haugen barking at Pazienza at the end of the round. You gotta box this guy. If you box this guy, he's never even gonna touch you. I know. Yeah, but you're not doing that. You're getting macho in there. I don't want to see no macho. Let's go. Just keep boxing. Keep this seven in his face. Look for a six. He's working every time. Don't reach for him. Don't reach for him. How's he cut? It's nothing. 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 Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Get out there and box. Let's go. Keep running. You got to hit a seven. You understand me? Keep popping in his face. You keep moving around. How do you get a point? Don't worry about it. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Keep running. What'd you cut? What's up there? He's got it on there. Okay. Pressure. Pressure. I did it. Vinny Pazienza a little concerned about the abrasion near the right eye, but his corner, Lou Duva and Kevin Rooney, John Scully, more concerned with Pazienza boxing more. Now, I thought he boxed well in rounds one and two, but they want perfection. They don't want any of the old machismo, bravado Vinny Pazienza. They want to win this fight the way they've planned to win this fight. Right. They don't want to be exciting. They want to win. because, And I think the reason for that, my, my feeling is that they know Vinny. And if Vinny gets into a little bit of war, he'll just, he'll just take it all. He'll just go into war for the whole way. They don't want to tempt him with feeling good at fighting toe to toe. They want him to stay with the boxing, make it almost a dull fight, but win. Saw a glimpse of the work Lou Duva was doing above that right eye of Vinny Pazienza. Pazienza prone to cuts. And you can see blood starting to stream down 
above that right cheek from that corner of the eye. Four jabs there from Pazienza. And you see, they didn't they didn't even land very solid, but he keeps them in, in Haugen's face. He, he forces Haugen to deal with the jab. Even though they're not landing, they're not Tommy Hearns punishing the jabs, but he's forcing them to deal with them, and that's opening up other stuff like that right hand there. Lead right hand scored for Pazienza. Boxing beautifully on the outside, not giving a lot of opportunities for Greg Haugen. Saw moments of frustration from Haugen earlier where he's trying to bring Pazienza into the fight that he wants. He has yet to do that. Haugen goes with the left hand and the right hand after Pazienza came in with a sweeping left. Doubles the jab but doesn't bring anything behind it. Another factor I think is important to note is like um, when they fought the previous fight, it was a 15 rounder. Now here, Vinny's using a lot of side to side movement, which puts a lot of strain on your thighs. It puts a lot of burn on there. Um, if this was a 15 round fight, I don't know if Vinny would want to take this approach, but it's 10 rounds, so I think he feels like it's 10 rounds. I can get away with utilizing more energy early. Shoe shining in the last 15 seconds here from Pazienza. It's been moving well. Pazienza and Haugen at the end of three. Now what I like there in the corner, what's interesting to me is how they were discussing the cut and they kept reassuring Vinny that the cut wasn't bad. And it just, it amuses me in a way because I've never ever in history heard a cornerman say, oh, the cut's terrible. You know, you got to do this, you got to do that. And uh, in an earlier round, Vinny um, asked how the cut was. And they said, oh, it's fine, you know. And if it was a terrible cut, they wouldn't tell him that. But being a fighter, that's what you want to hear. So when they told him that, in his mind, it's like, okay, okay, I, I believe you. Kevin Rooney and Lou Duva. In the corner of Vinny Pazienza, who's now showboating a bit, trying to draw Haugen in, and then Pazienza fires off and puts a little shoulder in there, too. Pazienza back to the outside now, utilizing that jab. Corner of Pazienza doesn't want to see too much of that. Referee Tony Orlando with the warning to Haugen for the elbow. Orlando, a veteran of 12 world title fights that he is ref. What I like from Vinny so far in this fight as compared to their first fight, back then Vinny had the look of a young guy that was coming out just aggressively, you know, all out, didn't know exactly what he was doing, but he, he knew he was on the right track. Where here, he looks more like a, a well-rounded professional. He's got a plan that he's staying with. I don't think when they fought the first time and the second time, I don't know if he had the wherewithal to stay with a plan like he's doing as well as he's doing this fight. Yeah, that first fight, which was now over three years ago, was just riding that wave of emotion in his hometown, putting forth effort, and in doing so, he earned himself a belt. When they fought the next February in 1988, then things didn't quite go the way he planned as Haugen won a comfortable, unanimous decision. Now, here we are, two and a half years after the second fight, to try to finish off this trilogy between Pazienza and Haugen. And in terms of the growth, in terms of the changes, most noticeable in the game of Vinny Pazienza. Right, I think Haugen was more of a veteran when they fought the first time. No doubt. So he hasn't changed or developed a great deal since the first fight, not nearly as much as Vinny has. One thing has changed, he's lost. He was an undefeated fighter when he fought Vinny Pazienza in Providence. Since then, of course, the loss to Pazienza and then completely controlled and dominated by Pernell Whitaker. That was a year and a half ago in February of 89. You know, what's great about a fight like this for TV is that Camacho beat Vinny and Pernell beat Haugen, so that kind of put them on a second rung and those guys on the top rung. But 
these guys are on the same rung with each other trying to elevate themselves. No doubt. Round number five. The two-time former lightweight champion trying to finish off the trilogy against Vinny Pazienza, the former lightweight champion who handed Greg Haugen his first career loss, scheduled for 10 here in Atlantic City. Pazienza still boxing well, out at range, utilizing the jab, lateral movement. Putting forth trainer Kevin Rooney's master plan, up on his toes, side to side, giving angles. And I think those three things, the jab, the side to side movement, and the angles, that's what's carrying the fight right now. Can't hold that top rope, though. Tony Orlando stops the action for a brief moment. And I think Haugen, I see Haugen actually is showing more spirit than he did in the first fight. In the first fight, I thought he was kind of listless. Here, he's talking more and um, trying to draw Vinny into that kind of fight. I think he's showing frustration, too, isn't he? This isn't the version of Vinny Pazienza he wants to fight. I don't think this is the version he expected to see. Like, I think he thought, you know, okay, here we go. We're going at it again. And, um, you know, this is kind of, uh, you know, unexpected. And it's, you know, it's got to be frustrating for him because he wants to fight. And, he, and, he, and he's trying to tap into Vinny's emotions. And so far, I don't think he's been able to get in there. Pazienza shows a brief glimpse of that emotion, but then right back out to the center of the ring, right back to the jab, and moving. Left hand scores. It's an interesting point that you bring up in terms of what Greg Haugen expected to see with Vinny Pazienza, because typically we've found through the years that many rematches are just an exaggerated form of what the first fight was. Right. And the trilogy, the third fight, tends to be an even more exaggerated form of what the first two were. Right. It's very rare that you see a trilogy extend to the point where one fighter completely changes themselves stylistically by the time the third fight comes around. Right. And that's, you know, that's, that's smart boxing. That's smart, um, you know, just, just being smart. Being intelligent enough to recognize that uh, maybe 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 Vinny knows that like okay let's make him th let's trash talk let's let's go at it verbally let's have the stare down let's let's get him in the mindset of war now we totally flip the script on him and we change and uh, that's frustrating to deal with Haugen wants to fight. And it's not just tonight. He's wanted to fight for the last six weeks. He's been waiting for this, and now here, Vinny's giving him that lateral movement. It's not what he wanted or expected. Haugen and Pazienza three at the halfway point of this scheduled 10-rounder in Atlantic City. Don't be stupid. He said, go out there and act like Willie Pep. Really fitting instructions to give to an Italian-American from New England. Act like Guillermo Papaleo from Middletown, Connecticut and show those boxing skills. Be a defensive wizard, box beautifully, and you'll win this fight easily. Kevin Rooney was a little upset with Pazienza in that fifth round because there were just a few singular moments where he showed mild reckless aggression. Just a little bravado. He wants none of it, John. Right. And I mean, to Vinny's credit, I mean, I think he needs to stand his ground on occasion. You know, you can't just run because Haugen won't respect him and, and uh, you know, will we'll keep his jab going. And, you know, Vinny has to not get, let Haugen realize, like, hey, I can punch too. I can dig down. Like, don't just walk in on me and not expect to get tapped a few times with some good shots. So I think Vinny's probably smart to do that. There needs to be balance, but if you're Kevin Rooney and Lou Duva, you know how far Vinny Pazienza can take it the other way, so right. you need to stay on top of him I, also. I think they probably agree that he should bang a little bit, but they don't want to let him know exactly. that. Exactly. They don't want to open the door to let Vinny be Vinny, because when Vinny gets into a groove of fighting, you know, you'll have a, you'll have a great fight, but that's not really conducive to him actually winning.
Boxing well here in the sixth round. Right. Now, I was going to say just the fact that Haugen is talking more. He's, uh, you know, he's obviously frustrated. So that that's clue number one that you're doing a good job. So the more Haugen talks, the, the more Vinny should move. Kevin Rooney in the corner, looking on. You can hear Kevin Rooney yelling out numbers from the corner. He just yelled out, try the seven. Let me see the seven. That's the old Customato number system that was employed going all the way back to the 1960s, Jim. Right, and I'm, uh, I don't know if Hogan knows what the seven is. I'm not even sure what the seven is exactly. D'Amato came up with a way to beat Willie Pastrano with the number system. And the guys who have trained in Catskill through the years have kept it going. Well, if the seven is win on the scorecards, Pazienza's doing that, isn't he? Yes, he is. End of six, Pazienza in control against Greg Haugen. Never mind that showboat. Never mind that showboat. He's in the corner of Haugen saying, hey, when Pazienza ducks down, that's when you need to place the uppercut. Round number seven. I think at this point, Haugen's probably trying to straight up box with Vinny a little bit too much. I think on the inside, he should try and tap into Vinny's uh, emotions. He should try and get a little dirty. He should try to push him, try to, um, you know, talk Bring in out his the ear. fighter in him. Bring out the fighter in, in, in him because, um, you know, at this point, it doesn't look like he can win, you know, in this type of stylistic matchup. But um, I think his hope knowing the type of guy Vinny is, knowing their history, he could he could get into his head, you know, certain things he could say. And, um, and, and especially with the physical, with pushing him. And like I say, maybe getting a little dirty, you know, within the rules, and, uh, you know, see if he can get Vinny to want to fight with him. Scored with a right hand moments ago, did Haugen. Taking his time patiently, though. Pazienza pushes him away. You still see blood streaming down from the corner of the right eye of Pazienza. That was a cut that started in round number two, but for the most part, Lou Duva has been able to keep it in control. Pazienza fires back after Haugen lands a jab. Still the lateral movement from Pazienza. That right hand was to the side of the head from Haugen. Haugen now working behind the jab, but unable to find his target with the right hand. See, and the, and the way Vinny's fighting, I don't think he's going to find it throwing two or three punches at his head. He has to throw punches, and even if he misses, keep throwing. You're going to hit Vinny with the, the sixth and the seventh punch, not the first or the second. You hear Haugen saying, come on, boy, let's fight. Pazienza won't engage him in that level of a fight. He wants the fight in which he wins, and that's been boxing. Haugen's still talking. Trying to hunt him down with the jab. Right uppercut wasn't there. Vinny shakes it off and gives him a questioning look. See, Haugen's playing right into it. He's walking in without being physical. He's just using his, his legs to walk in. He's walking right into range of all these punches. And just because you can take a guy's punches doesn't mean that, uh, you know, that you're winning. Pazienza heads back to his corner, seemingly ahead on the scorecards. Haugen, Pazienza, three. Joe Tessitore alongside John Scully. John... Let's put into perspective how important this fight is in terms of their respective careers because both men have stepped up to the next level. Both came up short. For Vinny Pazienza, it was this past February of 1990 when he lost a unanimous decision to Hector Macho Camacho. For Greg Haugen, it was a year and a half ago 
when he lost the IBF lightweight title to Pernell Whitaker. This then becomes critical to grab a win at this level just below the pound for pound elites. I mean, the fact is the winner of this fight will have defeated a former world champion, you know, which is which is impressive to get your name back in there. So even if they hadn't fought each other twice previously, this is a good fight for both of them. This is a crossroads fight. Whoever wins, you say, okay, I, I deserve another shot. If Greg Haugen is to be that guy, he's going to need to change things and change them quickly. He has allowed Pazienza to control the pace and flow of this fight with his lateral movement and his boxing skills. Sweeping left hand upstairs missed. The left hand to the body didn't. He's fighting a nice fight. He's, um, he's mixing his, his punching, his boxing. He's throwing some power shots in there, but his movement is the main thing. Haugen just can't seem to get on track. He just can't seem to find Vinny for more than two or three seconds at a time. Not, not even two or three seconds. This is exactly how Kevin Rooney and Lou Duva want all of these rounds to look. You know, and it's funny. The funny thing about boxing is people, like, like when I first started boxing, I thought everybody boxed. I thought everybody moved around and made their opponents miss. I thought everybody had the Muhammad Ali mindset. But uh, you quickly realize that, that it's a select few that can do that. Vinny can do that style, and he's showing it here tonight, and it's making a huge difference. And it's making things difficult for Haugen. Take a look back. Left uppercut at the end of that eighth round, John Scully. Good, he slipped, and you notice he slipped the jab to do it. That's textbook boxing. Stuff that you don't, you don't necessarily see when you're watching it firsthand. You need to see the replay. And um, that was a good, good technical move there. Round nine, six minutes to go in this critical third fight between Haugen and Pazienza. Whose career will move upward and onward? Good work with the jab from Pazienza. Now at this point, just like in their first fight, and it's something I didn't see from Haugen in the first fight either, was um, the fact that you don't sense urgency from him. And, it, and, it, and in this fight, I mean, it's obviously he's behind, you would expect to see some desperation. And, um, you know, without that, I don't think he can turn the fight around. I don't think he can get gain any advantage in the emotions of the fight if he doesn't show that urgency. As he ends up 27 years old, Trying to bounce back after the defeat to Hector Camacho. Haugen, 29 years old, now fighting at junior welterweight, which brings up another point, John Scully, and that is it appears that Pazienza carries the bigger weight better, that his frame and his body is more suited, and now you see the confidence as he winds up the bobo punch, and he gets him with a good right hand, that sends Haugen back. Haugen tries to shake it off. But Pazienza looks like he can carry the 140 much better. Right. He looks like he filled out nicely. He looks strong. Um, you know, it's noticeable his body looks good. His body looks toned. And, um, you know, Haugen looks... Haugen was never a really muscular guy anyway. But, um, yeah, the body's definitely di uh, noticeably different. Another right hand from Pazienza. Gaining momentum here in the back half of this fight. Yeah. 
missed. Lead right hand again from Pazienza. He ducked under, but the uppercut wasn't there from Haugen. And now dancing up on his toes. Round and round he goes after a big round for Vinny Pazienza. One to go in Atlantic City. Sex some air. Put some air. He's going to be asked. Put another one. You know, the crowd's going to be beautiful. Hey, 30 seconds when we Tenth and final round. Haugen has the ends of three. Joe Tessitore alongside John Scully. And John, I cannot believe what I was hearing in the corner of Greg Haugen. As his corner men were telling him, hey, don't fight with him. Pazienza's going to be desperate. Meanwhile, across the ring in the opposite corner, you hear Lou Duva not even referring to Vinny Pazienza as Paz or Vinny, calling him Willie Pep. Willie Pep saying it's not going to be Rocky anymore. It's going to be Willie Pep, meaning box, 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 and you'll win this fight. Two corners seeing this fight in two completely different ways. It, it, would, it would be hard to believe for me to think that Haugen's people think he's winning. And that's what I gather. When, when you tell a guy, don't bang with him, that means you have the fight won. Let's get through the round. Like, basically, they were basically telling the guy the same thing. Each corner was saying, get through this round and you have the fight. So I don't know, uh, I don't know where that's coming from. Uppercut from Pazienza. Haugen off balance momentarily. Well, on our scorecards ringside, no doubt to us that Pazienza has been controlling the action throughout, boxing beautifully. And if he can survive this final round, he will earn himself a win. Left hand on the back end there from Pazienza. I'll tell you what's a funny thing, the, the boxer's mentality. Maybe maybe Howard's cornerman boxed at one time previously, but a lot of times when someone boxes you and moves like Vinny does, after the fight they'll say, ah, he ran, he just ran from me. Like somehow in their minds, they don't equate that to winning. If you didn't hurt me and bang me up and cut me, then, then you didn't beat me. And, um, you know, that's the only thing I can think of. Haugen drew blood in the right corner of the right eye of Vinny Pazienza in the second round. It didn't deter Pazienza. He's controlled throughout regardless of the cut that Lou Duba has managed very, very well. And still boxing as we come to the final 30 seconds of this final round. I get the impression, could be wrong, I, I think Haugen knows more than what his corner knows. I, I think if you asked him right now, I don't think he thinks he's winning. I agree with you. Final moments. Haugen, Pazienza, the trilogy is in the books. Pazienza is celebrating. Haugen raises his arms. But the man whose arm will soon be raised in our eyes is the 27-year-old from Cranston, Rhode Island. Let's send it up to the ring for the judges' scores of Haugen Pazienza 3. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision, and it is a unanimous one. Judge Rocky Castellani scores the fight 96 to 94. Judge Deborah Barnes sees it at 98 to 92. Judge Rugine Grant has it at 97 to 93. All for the winner, the Pasmanian Devil.
Vinny Pazienza. Bookend wins now on the trilogy against Greg Haugen. He avenges his lightweight title loss from 1988, and he gets his career headed in the right direction. For John Scully, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us.